his eyes right off of his defensive player. Nice recognition by the point guard. Got the ball to Quinn. Lunsford got burned and was just about a step and a half too late. Now, the second one we wanted to look at was Kaysen and Lovick. There is speed against speed. Now, I said you play defense with your feet, but you've got to supplement it with your hand action. There's the hand action, but now the thing that I'm really impressed about, Kaysen, instead of standing by and being a watcher, he recovered and his timing was perfect. Nobody made the block and saved two points. Okay, you want to put on your coaching hat to for me there, big fellow? What do you think about this second half? Well, I think it's more important for the Redbirds to come out of the gate right now, Bob, than I think it is for Evansville because I have a feeling that Evansville has gotten a little bit in sync. That 7-0 run helped them. I heard Knight say at the Indiana game, I've always been a believer that the first five minutes of the second half determine a lot of basketball games, and I'm anxious to see what the Redbirds do the first five yes. minutes. We'll keep an eye on it. We'll check the stats, and we'll get the second half underway with you. 28-21 Evansville, back in a moment. point lead for the Aces as we get set for the second half. Let's check the Gatorade halftime statistics and here are the first half numbers and you'll see Illinois State at 29%. Evansville hit that 7-0 run and got their shooting percentage up to 47-8. Not too many free throws for Illinois State. Evansville 4 out of 7. The rebounding's even. Turnover's even. Interesting too, Jim Gibbons to point out that the two leading scorers haven't done a whole lot tonight. <laughs> Elkins averaging 26 a game has scored two and Maurice Trotter for Illinois State who averages 14.6. He has not scored a point in this game. As you said, he played well in the beginning of the year, but since they got back from the tournament that they played in, he just hasn't scored as well, and he's got to get back on track for them. Trotter, in the two games since, has scored a grand total of 21. As we mentioned, he's not scratched in this half, and he's in the top 10 in the Missouri Valley in three-point shooting, so he is a, a great weapon for the Redbirds, but nothing so far. Reed Jackson had a solid first half give, six points and six rebounds. Yeah, exactly. The one thing, when I asked for the keys from Illinois State, the one thing, and I, I think it's important to say this, Bob, that, that Kevin mentioned to me, he said, we need to become better offensively, and he said, we have people who are cutting to become receivers instead of scorers, and see, that's happening a lot. You just are, are catching the basketball, and you're looking for somebody else coming off instead of making yourself a threat to score with that basketball, so I think that happened an awful lot in the first half. Some of the other games in the Valley this evening, and here's a look at the scores. Drake with the lead over the Roadrunners at halftime. And Mercer with a one-point lead late at Indiana State. Other scores at the half, Tulsa winning big over Oral Roberts, and Wichita State up on Ole Miss at halftime. Here we go with the second half. Illinois State with it. Right underneath, that's tapped away, and Elkins picks it up. Well, Kevin Stahl, he just saw something he didn't like, and Franklin is off of the bench, and he's going to report in for someone that broke down. Let's see who it is. We're obviously going to find out who it is seconds. that he's unhappy with. <laughs> and it is Kenny Wright coming right out of the game. 28-21, Evansville by seven. Boy, tough to come out of that locker room after a half like that and then turn it over without a shot on your first possession. Well, and I think, too, Jim, it amplifies the point you made about how crucial the first five minutes oh. of the second half would be to Illinois State. Sure. Especially when you don't get a shot. Look at Franklin inside on Jackson. That's going to be a good matchup right there. Madison banks it, misses it. And rebounded by Kaysen. Muller, long three, missed it. Elkins kicks it out to Loving. On the nice cut, cut, Jackson reverses and scores. And Jackson with a steal, Loving the dish and lays it in. Boy, that'll turn the crowd on. And Kevin Stallings wants a timeout. 32-11, Evansville by 11. 32-21 with 18.46 to play in a timeout called by the Redbirds. 
So the spurt that the Redbirds were looking for instead goes to Evansville. And the Aces have their biggest lead of the night. Evansville has outscored Illinois State 11 to 2 when you span the two halves. Total time of four minutes and 31 seconds. They've got an 11 point lead. Here's Elkins with that beautiful outlet to Loving. Now, watch this, Bob. Look at the pass. I was so surprised because Jackson was all the way over on the other side of the floor, and I was almost going to say, let's turn around and see if the freshman brings it back out. Now he comes right back in. Now look at the nice dish off. That's why Jim Cruz said to you, listen, that's the guy that ties it all together at both ends. 32-21. Evansville leading Illinois State after the timeout. Now, let's see if the intensity level picks up for Illinois State because Kevin Stallings wasn't very happy. Madison with the foul. And I would have to say, James, that this possession here oh. is a very big one for you, Illinois State. You are right about that, Bob. You've got to get off of the mark, and you've got to get something up on that board, but you can't force it. Inside Kern playing with three fouls. No, no whistle. A lot of contact in there. Elkins clears it out. Elkins, great fake. Fires. Misses. Trotter. Casey takes it, hits it. David has scored six in this game. His season high is eight. That's your, that's your senior leadership, and that's probably the guy that they needed to have take a shot, Bob. I know he's not a good shooter, but he can get him on the board. Jim off the ball. Uh -huh. A lot of pushing, oh, shoving, grabbing. Much more this half than the first half, and I've been watching it because I was watching Muller the last time down. Boy, a lot of body contact on the cutters. There's a good bounce off and a nice pass back in. And Trotter with a foul. That time, Elkins drew the double team and had the presence of mind to dump it right back to Reed Jackson. Boy, that was wonderful. And as soon as Reed Jackson got that ball, and boy, he had the presence of mind to pump it back inside. That was terrific. There's the foul there. Those aren't very tough to call, the ones when they put them on the floor. <laughs> you got those right all the oh, time. Oh, boy, I was 100% on those. And there were a few I guessed on every now and then. Jackson is 5 of 8 at the line this season. Leads this club in assists and steals. And is on pace to become the 33rd player in Evansville history to score 1,000 points. He has nine tonight. Ten point lead for Evansville. Boy, that's a great matchup with Kaysen and Loving. I mean, that is speed and quickness against speed and quickness. Trotter missed it. Loving high to one arm the rebound. I told you you could leap, didn't I? Yes, sir. And Whoa. You're right. Jackson shovels to Loving. Pretty play. Oh, look here. Oh, oh. Foul on Jackson. My goodness. Dan Muller. Watch this now. Willie Sanchez, boy, he came running out of there. Now, let's see what happened. I saw the push, but I didn't see that. Don't watch the show. Oh, well, he climbed right on Jackson's back. He, we, I saw the tail end of it. I did not see the player come up. I didn't see Muller come up on Jackson's back right there. Good replay, Greg. It answers everything that happened. Reed Jackson picked up his third foul, and look at this underneath. It's going to be a foul on Brian Kern of Illinois State. It's his fourth. Well, the officials, this is a crucial spot to take control of this game. Because the pushing and shoving, as you pointed out, Jim, in this second half has really been... Uh, well, you and I have obvious. talked uh, ad nauseum, Bob, about play inside and the pivot. If that's a point of emphasis, then I think we're in for a long year. Jackson. 
Puts it up and a foul. Foul is going to be on Marcus Franklin, his second. Friends at National Car Rental, everything we do is aimed at one single goal to keep you moving. And National is ready to get you and your rental car on the road as quickly as possible. So choose National. Our color is green, and green means go. 1-800-CAR-RENT. Jackson in double figures with 10. He is the leading Evansville scorer in this game. Man hits them both at the line. 37-23. Kaysen trying to draw the foul on Loving. Unsuccessful. Kaysen dribbles in. Trotter in the corner for three. Missed everything. Jackson runs down the board. scores it and a foul now wait a minute now we've got an offensive foul player control on Madison no basket Tim Richardson now watched the defensive player has the opportunity to maintain his position Bob and I don't think that's a real bad call I don't know if you agree but I think so many times defensive players are put at a disadvantage Trotter standing he goes up legally to try to block that shot and Madison came in and uh, he just put his body right on him. You do not have the right to go through something. Exactly. Exactly. 37-23 Evansville its biggest lead tonight 14 and we've got another whistle and somebody else hits the deck and this foul will be on Loving. It will be his first foul. I get the impression, Bob, that they're going to start blowing the whistle yeah. a little quicker now and a little more often because, boy, it is body against body the first five minutes of the second half. Altadonna, good look, sticks it. Chad with five, 37-25. Evansville by 12. Madison. Spark steps out for the screen. Now Jackson gives it back underneath. A great look at Sparks with a jam. Boy, Ray Jackson's doing it all tonight, Gibbs. That's exactly. That's why I'm glad we talked about him in the stand-up. And I know I keep saying it, Bob, but I try to do it for younger players. Now, Elkins was having trouble in the first half and did some things, but I have been watching Reed Jackson this whole game. He has been all over that basketball floor. Look at that. That's what you call keeping your head up and spotting the open man. But he does it. Jackson does. He rebounds. He passes. He sees the open people. He plays at an intensity level that's unbelievable for about 40 minutes a game. Right back in. Kern is out with four fouls for Illinois State. He very nearly picked up his fifth one on that dunk by Sparks. And just saw Franklin misses. And Elkins rebounds. And Stallings is very close to a technical. I wouldn't be surprised if he picks one up if things continue the way it's going here. Madison with a three. He's got nine. It's 42 27. Stallings is on the floor. There is a breakdown defensively by Illinois State right there. A breakdown, a wide open shot by Madison, who's capable of hitting that shot and did in the first half, and a breakdown. Foul on Andy Elkins, his second. 17 point Evansville lead with 14.52 to play. They've been on a big run, haven't they, Bob? And it spanned two halves. That 7 0 spurt at the end of the first half. Altadonna misses the three. Rebound inside and a foul on Evansville. Have you got the pass to Altadonna in the corner? The foul is going to be on Loving. It's his third. Boy, 
Boy, the interesting thing on the out-of-bounds play, Bob, was that Altadonna was standing right over in the corner and the defensive player for Evansville did not look and have the ball out of bounds and an eye on Altadonna, and they passed the ball right to him. As I told you, he can can it. He's having a bad year shooting so far because he's only at 38%, but boy, you can't give the guy an opportunity to hit that three-pointer when you're this far down and you know they're going to look for some three-point shots to get back in the game. Dan Muller. His sixth point. That's his first opportunity at the line this evening. He was accepted at Stanford. Opted to play his basketball at Illinois State. And boy, the Redbird fans happy he made that choice. Rising star in the valley. Here's a loose ball underneath. Picked up by Wright. Turnover for Evansville. Illinois State trailing by 15. Smiley for three. And it's cleared by Franklin. Smiley penetrates, wheels in. That one blocked by Rick Jackson and a foul on Smiley as he grabbed Jackson by the arm. Didn't get the rebound. If you've got it, I'd like to see it. Watch the interesting here. Sparks is 7 feet, 220. He had perfect position, Bob, but look at Two Illinois State players just got a body on him, and the young man just wasn't strong enough in the upper body to maintain his position. He did have it, but he just didn't get into somebody's body and then go back toward the rebound, and he got out-hustled. Not necessarily out-hustled, but he lost the rebound. Evansville on this 20-8 to eight run that spans the two periods. Quinn inside, wiggles free and scores. Chris was seven. 44-27, Evansville. And another whistle inside. And a foul on Evansville. Calling the stuff inside a lot closer this half than they were the first half. Franklin, Marcus Franklin is very, very active. You and I saw that, the Evansville, Indiana game at Indianapolis. Very active inside, and you watch what's going on. You'll see the hooking, you'll see the pushing, see the hook right there? Now he comes back and he's bodying him and taking that position away from Franklin. That's a good call. Franklin, with his fourth point, Came to Illinois State from Hutchinson Community College. And it was there that Marcus played behind Roy Harrison who went to Purdue and Ben Davis who's gone on to Arizona. Yes. Watch Jackson and Wright. Now, nice move by Wright. Jackson rode him right out last time and that time when he tried it, Wright went right in behind him. And a blocking foul on Quinn for Evansville. One and one, Bob, with 13 minutes and 54 seconds on that clock, and Illinois State's on the one and one. Well, that's a big uh, plus for the Redbirds and make some points and get back in this game without the clock run. Franklin with five. And when you're not shooting well, as we said before, you can go to that line, and that's going to make up for a little bit of it. So you've got to can those free throws. A 15-point lead for the Aces. Their first night in the Missouri Valley, hosting Illinois State. This is the first conference game of the new year. Elkins for three, and he's fouled after the shot. Oh, oh, three, three free throws coming. One of the Al things Dunham. I was looking for there, Bob, was to see how patient Evansville was going to be. You know that Illinois State knows what the score of this game is and knows how much time is left on that clock, and they're going to try to get it all back in a hurry. But when you're against an opponent like that, then the longer you wait and the more you break down the defense, the easier it's going to be. And, and Evansville did a pretty good job of being patient right there. Elkins. 71% of the line this season. That's just his third point tonight. He's had two big games, 22 at Western Michigan, and then last Saturday at the RCA Dome in Indianapolis, 30 against Bobby Knight's Hoosiers. Trying to go three for three at the line. 
He's a local product. The first one to sign to play basketball here since 73. Went to Bossy High School here in Evansville. And he hits all three of them. 47-29, an 18-point lead for the Aces, and that's their biggest of the game. Wright penetrates and rolls it in. Kenny's first basket. Jackson. Now Evansville sets it up. Same offense, the movement, the passing, the screening. And a travel on Quinn. Just lifted that pivot foot before he put the basketball down, and that's an obvious travel. The eagle eye of Willie <laughs> Sanchez. Each See, team has turned thing, it over 17 times. The one thing that's a little tough for Illinois State, Bob, is they don't, now there's the guy I'm waiting for. They don't have a real go-to guy that, you know, you need a couple of threes, you need something to happen. They don't have that kind of a score on the floor. Evansville does and Elkins and Jackson because they can light it in, up at any given moment, but that's what makes it tough for a team like Illinois State to come from behind right now. A lot of talking going out on the floor and has been since the start of the second half. I'm only commenting now because Tim Richardson has went in to say something to Marcus Franklin, but it's been going on on both sides and I've been watching it. This is going to be one heck of a rivalry since oh. Evansville got into the conference. Yes, sir. Nice cut right with a slam and the foul on Evansville. The foul is going to be on Layden. <laughs> A bullet pass inside to Kenny Wright. Watch the movement now. See the back screen that came up. Nice movement. Again, the back door. That's the way to take the ball to the basket with some authority. And Andy Elkins got burned there defensively. It doesn't happen to him very often, but it did that time. Kenny Wright with five. Jeff Layden with four fouls for Evansville. Twelve and a half to play. Elkins just glides in. Scores his seventh point. Notice he didn't put it on the floor. Smiley up and in. The freshman from Brookville, New York. His first bucket. 13-point lead for Evansville. Madison, too long. Layden knocked it out of bounds. Illinois State ball. Evansville is going to have to hit those shots if they're going to take them, Bobby. What Illinois State is doing now, have you noticed? The last two or three times down, as soon as the ball has come over midcourt, Altadonna and the wingman have come up to put the trap on right there. Obviously, somebody's going to be open for Evansville, and they've got to convert. Lunsford, short. Yeah. 11.40 to play in the game. Evansville by 13. The shot clock now shows 12. Reed Jackson, through two men, throws the foul. Well, I want to tell you, you watch somebody that fights for position. Altadonna did a terrific job of guarding him that time, Bob. And boy, he went to meet that pass, and he sealed him off, and they got him the ball exactly where he wanted it. That's the one thing with the passing and the motion offense. The passer has got to hit that cutter. When they come off of those picks and screens and they're curling, you can't wait until they get open, Bob, to get them that ball. You've got to have that ball on the way. It's like the routes in professional football. The ball is gone before they break. Ray Jackson with 13 and the men of Jim Cruz lead 51-36 with 11.35 to plug. Evansville 51, Illinois State 36 here with 11.35 left in our second half. Bob Rathbun, Jim Gibbons from Evansville, Indiana on this Saturday night. 
Take a look, Bob. Now, here's what we were telling. Watch Aldenani. He's going to come up behind Reed now. Watch Reed kind of seal him off, have him hook a little. Now, the pass was made to the exact side that he needed to have that basketball. Had the pass been made to the other side, to the left side, obviously Aldenani was going to be able to flip that ball away. So, Reed Jackson sealed him off. That wasn't a real bad job. And technically, Reed Jackson did hook him a little with the arm. A couple of seniors <laughs> know what they're doing. Yeah. Elkins and Jackson. <laughs> In and out for Antonio Cooper. Illinois State looking to get that quick three, but Cooper saw it go halfway in the bucket and pop out. Jackson. That's good patience. Madison's runner rims in. Look at this ball. Oh, man. And we've got Jackson. Reed Whoa, Jackson. almost did the same thing. Came in and almost got another steal. He may lead the Missouri Valley oh, Conference boy. this season in floor burns. I'll tell you, I have a great amount of respect for that young man. Anybody that plays like that, you've got to admire them. That's a and good call. That is a Toby good call. Madison. You bet, because he knew he had been screened. I watched the whole thing right in front of us. The down screen was coming. He wanted to switch, because even in practice yesterday, remember Evansville was doing a lot of switching, even though they play man-to-man. -man. They were doing Now watch this. Take a look. Right there, you, you couldn't see it. He just grabbed him over on the other side on the top of the screen. Dan Muller with his eighth point. 6'6 freshman, Central Catholic, and Lafayette, one of two Indiana products on this Illinois State team. Muller with nine, 53-38. You haven't seen Elkins or Reed Jackson go to the bench since the game started, have you? No. Boy, they get about 39 minutes a game. And we've got another foul, and this one will be on Muller. That's one of the things we talked about, Bob, in terms of hand checking. You know, I said it the other night. You can put your hand on a person to find them, I think the officials feel. But once you keep riding along with him as he's going to the basket, then that's a problem because you put the, the offensive player at a disadvantage, and that's just not allowed. Reed Jackson has 14 points. And rims out the foul shot. Right the rebound. Smiley penetrates and missed the shot. Jackson the rebound. Big screen by Elkins and the foul coming up on Smiley. Smiley didn't get much help. I mean, he couldn't see it coming, obviously. A good move by the senior Elkins. Now, the interesting thing about that is that we haven't mentioned, I don't think, up until now, Bob, the one th advantage that Evansville has against pressing teams is they take Reed Jackson at 6'5", and he actually brings the ball up the court most of the time, and there was a perfect example of it. He handles that basketball pretty well. Elkins missing the front end of the one-and-one. One. Ten minutes to go in the game. Cooper with a dish inside. Loose ball picked up by Elkins. The Illinois State just hasn't been able yeah. to hit that big basket to get a run going. Nope, and there was no spacing right there. That's not the kind of a pass you're going to get away with, Bob. Madison. Nice pass. And Quinn scores. Chris with nine. 56-38 Evansville. Lunsford nearly threw it away. Muller retrieves. Smiley penetrating. Madison got a hand on it. Loose in the lane. Picked up by Reed Jackson. Boy, Evansville has really gotten to the loose balls here in the second half. By the cut, Elkins lays it in. 20-point lead for the Aces. See, Kevin needs to get another one. I think he's trying to get it right now. 
Timeout, Illinois State. This one slipping away from the Redbirds. 8.52 to play in the Missouri Valley Conference season. We've got more action coming up once we turn the calendar over to the new year. And we'll be right back here at Evansville at Roberts Stadium, Southwest Missouri State, on January 7th to battle the Aces. Fifty-eight, thirty-eight, Evansville, and a foul on Quinn for reaching in, trying to knock it away from Muller. Had the right idea, Bob, but just about a step too late. He got the body. If it weren't for the fact that he put the body on Muller, he had the arm out, which is what you want to do and get out into the passing lane and everything. But he just he didn't have good defensive position. Tim Richardson just said something to to Chris. Chris, I saw a lot of in high school because he played in South Bend at St. Joe High School and led them to the state tournament in Indianapolis. And, gee, a terrific young man. And Jim Cruz even told us yesterday they're expecting a lot of things out of him. See the double team right here starting to extend the game to 94 feet. Not quite 94, but they're going to open up the game a little more if they can to see if they can get Evansville in a, run in a running game. Muller with his second foul. And that will put Reed Jackson at the line with 8.32 to play. Right now, Bob Evansville doesn't have to afford to be in any kind of a hurry. And there's Jim Cruz talking things over with Mr. Quinn. Meanwhile, Jackson hits the first shot for his 15th point. That matches his season high. Reed also had 15 at Western Michigan in the season opener. Jackson's career high is 27. 16 for Reed. 60-39. And a man down in the lane. It's Al Tadana. And the foul was called, I think, on Layden. Well, it was, and I can see why, because Al Tadana was standing right in the lane. I happened to be watching the whole sequence. Just came up to put a back screen on, and Layden did not know and didn't get any help from anyone. You know, defensively, you can't stand around and not talk. You've got to communicate. That's the one word that coaches use, is you better communicate defensively. And that time, I'm not quite sure that Evansville did, but if they did, Layden didn't get the message. Jeff fouls out of the game. Scott Sparks comes in. Meanwhile, Chad Altadonna coming in. Now, he came off the bench last year, fired home 13, and went 9 of 9 from the foul line to lift Illinois State to their win over Evansville at home. He's got six points tonight. That young Marvelous man, free throw <laughs> shoot. Well, he, he's called chad matic because he's so automatic at the free throw line. He is a great free throw shooter. Open down court. Sparks stuffs it. One way to beat the press. I would say so. You can't score two at one end and give up two that easy at the other end and expect to gain any ground. Kaysen fakes the three. Kaysen has to take it. He missed it that time, but they're in desperate shape. Yeah, yeah, they are, Bob. And Evansville is doing a marvelous job of not fouling inside when Illinois State is trying to create and penetrate. And, I mean, they have really shut them and kept them off the free throw line. Jackson. Gets it back. 21-point lead for the Aces. 7.25 left. Inside, Trotter. Missed it. Another rebound for Jackson. Look at that baseball outlet to Madison. Elkins with a follow. No high glance. Altadonna rebounds. I mean, Reed Jackson has played the whole night. And has given Evansville everything, and he still had enough left in that right arm to fire that pass about 75 feet. Kern connects. Brian with eight, saddled with foul trouble this evening. 62-43. 
Now Evansville will back it out. Yeah. Burn a little clock. You bet, Bob, and spread that defense because now you can really break them down because if you're Illinois State, you have to start gambling. You just have to come out and try to get into the lane and try to get a steal, get a breakaway, create some action. So let's see if they get lay-ins now because they're doing that. Jackson flips it up and off. And Kern controls. 6-10 to play, 62-43. Jamar Smiley, the freshman, coming back in for Illinois State. And also for Evansville, Derek Loving is in. Chris Quinn goes out. Yeah, I'm trying to see. That's a good match now. See, Smiley came in. Jimmy Cruz counters with Loving. Now, that's a good match. Clock expires. David Kaysen couldn't get it off in time. Now Antonio Cooper will come into the game. 62-43, a 19-point lead for Evansville. That won't happen to David very often. Not when you're a senior and you're a kind of leader that he is. He just got caught and caught and didn't realize, and the bench was right here, and no one was yelling at him, I don't think, Bob. Jackson spots Elkins. Andy inside. Loving lays it home. Derrick with nine. 64-43 Evansville. And Jackson with his 13th rebound tonight. 16 points, 13 boards, and six assists for this senior from Norris City, Illinois. Reed Jackson. All the way to the bucket. He lays it in. Boy, has he had a night. And Elkins bids for the steal. Outside, Cooper for three. Hits it. 66-46. Now a whistle. And an official's timeout. And a wet spot on the baseline. Beginning December 22nd, Prime Hoops tips off another season of college basketball. This season, you'll see some of the top teams in the nation with matchups from the Atlantic 10, Metro, Great Midwest, the Pac-10, the Missouri Valley, and the Southwest Conference. Beginning December 22nd on Prime. The big man on campus, Reed Jackson. What a night he's had. 66-46, Evansville by 20. Jackson with 18 points and 13 rebounds. Interesting to note, Jim, that in the Division I history of Evansville, they never had a triple-double turned in by a player, but Jackson's come <laughs> awfully close. And he only needs a handful of assists late in this game to get it tonight. And boy, he is a fine passer, so he is liable to get it. Picks up the foul here. Or does he? Let's see. This is going to go against uh, Gibbons. Rob's first. Ten team fouls on Illinois State, so Jackson will shoot two. Talked about his assists, and Reed Jackson led this Evansville club in assists last season. Let him, if you can believe it, also in steals. Now, that's not yeah. bad for a 6'5 guy. You know he's going to do his rebounding and he's going to do his scoring, but as we said in the stand-up, it's all those little things, and that's why one of the coaches told me he is a pure joy to coach. Comes off an 1,800-acre farm. Works there in the summer. Now we got a foul on Gibbons as he levels uh, Sparks in the lane. 
Interesting. The second foul. That you should mention that about Reed Jackson because I remember a couple of years ago when I was doing one of their games reading about him working on that farm all day and then working late at night on the shooting and other phases of his game. That's what you call calling the, you know, paying the price. Some people want to be good, but, you know, they aren't willing to pay the price that it takes to do the extra things like the shooting all day or the drills all day to, to, to make yourself a better basketball player. Sparks in double figures with 10. That's a season high. It's 68-46 Evansville. 420 to play. Cooper. See how much longer Elkins and Jackson are going to stay in the game, Bob. Jackson fades and misses this one. Whistle, no basket. We got to travel on Jamar Smiley. And a timeout on the floor. Three minutes and 48 seconds left in the Missouri Valley Little Lifter from Evansville. And the ace, southwest corner of Indiana. Tri-state area. The fans, 10,219 that turned out tonight. And they have seen the home team just pull away from Illinois State here in the second half. Underneath, Elkins up and short. And rebounding is Marcus Franklin. Cooper. Jackson, another rebound. Boy, that's smart. Bring that basketball up. Get the floor set up. Burn some time off the clock. See if you can get another lay-in. Shot clock at 8, 7. Sparks will take it and hit it. Himself a pretty good basketball game, Bob, for a guy that got a starting assignment. He's made the most of it. 12 points. Comes from a basketball family. And his dad, the head coach at Vincennes, played for his dad for matriculating to Evansville. Smiley, short. Picked up by Lunsford. He missed it. And guess who has another rebound? That is unbelievable how he is always around that basketball. Illinois State, Bob, is shooting about 29%, maybe less than that right now for the basketball game, and you're not going to beat many teams that way, plus the fact they've turned it over, as we said, a lot of times. Sparks had it knocked out of his hands. It'll be Evansville ball, but just two seconds on the shot clock as Chris Flynn comes in. Jackson coming out. Yep, he is. Boy, they ought to give that guy oh, a standing I'll ovation. So. I'll tell you that. And that's why I asked before. I was hoping that he would come out of the game and Elkins would come out of the game so that these people could recognize a great effort by two young student athletes. And at the shot clock. Toby Madison scores his 13th point. 72-46. Smiley missing badly and Quinn rebounds. Well, don't think for a moment that the folks at Normal have circled February 8th on the calendar for the rematch. They'll circle the wagons. Madison. Around the spark screen. Minute 15 to play. Shot clock at eight. Elkins knocked free. That's a travel on Quinn. Now Jim Cruz will clear the bench. Loving comes in. Matt Hobson, number 14, comes in. Elkins goes out. Madison goes out. Reed's been the big star, Jim, but 
you really have to hand it to Evansville at the defensive end of the floor. They all worked in sync. They did. Very, very, very good team defense. And look at that fly swat rejection by Sparks. I hit the Quinn. Trying to put an exclamation point on this one. 74-46. And the three goes for Cooper. 45 seconds left. 74-48. Inside, and Jackson lays it in. Ryan Jackson, who had been a starter in the first couple of games, but out of the starting lineup tonight, contributes. 76-48 is the score. Here's Smiley's runner. It's no good in the rebound. Controlled by Sparks. If you're wondering why the crowd going bananas, <laughs> if they hold the team, the opponent under 50, there's a free food giveaway, and that's why all the fans are excited. Uh. And I think Jim Gibbons, they might even cut you in on part oh, of that Oh, man, it's chicken. We're going to get some free 12 seconds on that clock, Coach. But for these 10,000, 219, that's the longest yeah. 12 seconds of the night. I'm glad you explained that because I'm sure our viewers and our listeners had no clue as to why this crowd is all of a sudden. Sometimes that happens when a player comes off the bench, a walk-on or someone that's a crowd favorite. But this has to do with people that are They're hungry. <laughs> Loving goes two for two at the line. Last, last chance. The long three is good by Cooper. 78-51 is going to be the final score. The Evansville Aces in their first Missouri Valley Conference game in the winner's circle and in a big way. What a second half for the Aces. This was a 28-21 game at the half, folks. And the final score is Evansville 78 and Illinois State 